Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I have a little bit of a different setup today. I'm gonna to be working on the computer while talking to the camera. I'm gonna be showing you today how I find cash flow positive rental properties in the GTA. I'm gonna be focusing on the suburbs of the GTA because downtown Toronto, the numbers get a little dicey. I got a question a few days ago from Karen, shout out to Karen, asking, with everything going on in the market, will next year or 2022 be good for buyers? Um, Karen, if you were talking in terms of rental properties for passive income, I don't know what's gonna happen to the future. I know everyone hates that answer, but I can show you what's going on right now and why I do think even if you get in now, if you get in next year, if we find the right areas, the up and coming areas uh, outside of Toronto, if we find the right properties, I think it would be good. I think we can turn a cash positive rental property. Let's go through some numbers now. Um, if you can see on the screen, I'm gonna be showing you a sensitivity analysis. I'm gonna be choosing three properties doing different scenarios on each varying on down payment. Um, I've pre-populated the interest rate. This is what I've found for four or five year mortgage rate from the banks. And let's get started going straight into the numbers. First property is in Hamilton. As you can see here, this is how I, what I look for first in a, like a duplex, I guess, would be two kitchens. This is a good start. It, it would mean it's two separate units fully functional units they're asking around 350,000 it's been over a month on the market as you can see here what do they give us they give us taxes 1900 if we read what do they say here let's look through some of the details fully renovated turnkey home I don't know fully renovated on 350,000 that might be shady but no big deal two unit duplex two hydrometers awesome so we can separately bill them for their utility usage. Let's take a look here. So it'll be a two bedroom, two bath on one unit, and then a one bedroom, one bath on the other unit. Let's let's get through the let's go through the numbers right away. So I will be happy for three hundred and twenty-five thousand for this unit, given the market and how long it's been on been on the market. I'm, there's no way I'm going to offer three hundred fifty thousand. Um, Let's start, we'll start at like 300 and hopefully get them to settle somewhere in the middle at 325. So here we're looking at 325,000. I'd be happy with that price. Taxes, they said 1937. If we go plus 1937 divided by 12 for our monthly, we have no condo fees, insurance. I pay around $100 a month for insurance on a $700,000 house. Um, I don't think that'll be half that, but let's just put $75. Utilities, these would be pay, charged back to the tenants. They'd pay their own utilities. Miscellaneous. Let's go through, if we just like quickly see some of the pictures, if there's, I don't know, there's not much we could do unless we actually do a property tour and go through with a property inspector. Regardless, let's give ourselves a $300 a month buffer. Doing some research on this area, the two bedroom, two bath unit will be $1,150 a month. The one bedroom, one bath separate unit would be 750, giving us total gross rents of 1,900 a month. So if we look over here, even if you're able to put only 10% down, you're still cash positive around $51. This doesn't give us much buffer. We do have a little bit of a $300 buffer here, but if this is your second or third property, the banks might require 20% down payment which we'd need 65,000 down, and this might give us around $200 a month. Let's say everyone wants to know what can I sell it for? What can I sell it for? Who knows? If you do your own research, the past 10 years of Hamilton, it's gone up 100%. So if we look at, if we do this calculation, it'd be 10% a year. I'm gonna go worst case scenario. We're gonna do 3% a year. So inflation plus one. So 1.03 to the power of 10. These are just quick numbers, dirty calculations. It's giving us a selling price in 10 years. 436,000. Again, this is using less than half of what Hamilton has gone up by in the past 10 years. Mortgage. Let's say our mortgage is at 70%. We've paid 30% off of it. Agent lawyer. Let's say 6% total. We're at $255,000 gain. Uh, cash on hand, pre-tax. That's not a gain. Our gain would be this number down here, around 190,000 pre-tax, not bad. Let's look at the second scenario. This unit is also in Hamilton. 
but it is a four bedroom, two bath, has two kitchens. It's been on the market, hasn't been on the market that long. Still not gonna give them what they're asking for. I always go under. If we take a look here, what I like about this, it's currently tenanted, they tell us right here. They give us the rents, 1450 and 950. What's kind of weird, you see this number here, potential gross rents, 3000 plus utilities. I don't know what that means. I don't know how they get that number, but regardless, we're gonna go 1450 plus 950. Let's start running some numbers. I would be happy with, I don't know, 355,000 for this. Taxes, 1648. It's $300 less than the other one. Zero. Insurance, same $75. Utilities, so as you can see, this one says plus utilities. This one is all inclusive, so we'd have to pay for that ourselves. I'm gonna say it's 200 a month for utilities. Miscellaneous, again. I don't know, what do we do, 350? Let's make this one a little worse, 350. If we go back to run these numbers, 1450 plus 950 for rents. Where are we at? This is awesome, look at this. Even if we are ab only able to put 10% down, given these buffers, this, this is our buffer to be honest. We're at 200 a month. If this is your second or third property, bank requires 20%, you're at $365 a month. I'm loving this. Let's go run the 10 year analysis with my made up 3% a year increase. Look at this. We are at 477,000 selling price, 70% of our mortgage paid off, 278,000. Our gain would be to over $200,000. Not bad, not bad at all. What I like about when there's already a tenant in there when we go view the unit, we can interview the tenants. We could say, what's wrong? Has there, is there anything we need to know about? Do they wanna stay there? Mm -mm. Let's run the last unit. This one is in Oshawa. I wanted to find like a different suburb. I wasn't able to find a detached house. This one is semi-detached. As you can see, I found again the two kitchens. It's tenanted. If they tell us the tenants again, how much they pay, 1650 and 800. So this unit is a three bedroom, two bath, and then a one bedroom, one bath. So if we run these numbers, I'll never give what people ask, especially not in this market when there aren't as many buyers due to the uncertainty. Let's go, what would I do? I found, I did some research on this area. I would do 435,000. I'm not just making these numbers up. If we do our taxes, taxes are a lot higher here. 2,500 divided by 12. Zero here. Let's say this is more expensive at 100. I don't know if we pay the utilities here all inclusive. Let's do the 200 a month here and then 300 a month here. Just giving us some buffers. They said 1650 plus 800. Oh, my hand's working too fast. Okay, this gives us a bunch of this, is, this scenario is a little different. Take a look here. It all depends on this number right here, if we pay the utilities or not, if it's charged back to the clients, the, the tenants, I'm sorry. This is a little more dicey. If you only have 10% down or 15%, you're cash negative. Even if you're at 20% and $80 a month, it's not that much of a buffer to be safe, but it, it's all a risk we take when we invest in properties. I think what you're looking for here, I guess, is the capital appreciation. Obviously, the more the property starts at, it's going up at a higher amount. 3% of 435 is obviously more than 325. But this would be awesome if we're able to sell for a $255,000 gain. Um, so that that's all I want to do in this video. I just wanted to quickly take a look at some properties. This is without us like interviewing the tenants without actually seeing the property. We might even be able to get a better price. There's no way, no chance in this market that I would give them their asking price. So I'm confident in these selling, these buying prices that I've placed here. Um, that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions, if you want some other areas. I do think like other up and coming areas that I haven't looked into right here would be London, Ontario, growing city, plus the university town, even if you go Waterloo, in the Kitchener area, growing university towns. That's all for today, guys. Please remember to check out my past videos on beginner investment advice, as well, check out my upcoming video where I break down the steps to get your first investment property. That's all for now.